Yo, what is going on, y'all? I'm Cavell Anderson, and we're back with another VV and Ecomi video. And this one, we're going to be covering VV Vault's video on if VV and the Omi token is actually a scam. He's well researched this video. There's a lot of information without it with, within it, and I'm going to be covering some of my opinions on it as well. I'm going to be sharing my opinions while he goes over the information that he's he's um, found that's really important to him. And I think this is a, this is important as a whole. At, at the very least, this should have some type of conversation going within the community so people can share their thoughts opinions and share your information and perspectives on why you may disagree with certain things or, or maybe if he has some type of questions that you have answers to you can answer those questions so we all are informed that being said let's jump into it and see what what he's talking about in this one be sure to drop that thumbs up subscribe and turn on notifications and let's get it it was present me like a What's up, everybody? Today's video asks the question Are VV and Omi scams? I've been buying VV NFTs and Omi for almost three years now, so I have a lot of experience with the project. And today I'm going to be looking through Ecomi's W's and L's, their wins and their losses, to see if this project should be considered a scam or a soft rug pull. First, let's take a look at the definition of the word scam. According to Oxford, Oxford says that a scam is simply a dishonest scheme or a fraud, which is a pretty general definition. And let's check out one more. Dictionary.com says that a scam is a confidence game or other fraudulent scheme, especially for making a quick profit. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the history and performance of VV, Ecomi, and the Omi token. Now... <clears throat> Just to prefix this with a little bit of information and perspective, I don't think that this would be a very great scam. The reason that you all hear me say in a lot of my videos these days, I believe that the team is incompetent. It's because I don't believe that this is a flat out scam because this would be the shittiest scam in history for one reason only. They started this before it was ever proven that there was money and value in NFTs whatsoever. That, that This was way before these projects started blowing up and booming and all this money was to be made here and everyone knew what crypto and all this stuff was going to become. This was in the works being done way before the NFT space did what it did. And that's why Vivi was in position to capitalize on what the NFT space actually did. And that's why they had already had big licensors and brands signed up and stuff like that. So I, what I think goes on is that VV is very incompetent. VV looks, VV does things that they don't realize how it's going to look to the community. They do things under the table and they don't have anybody actually communicating things in the way that needs to be communicated. They try to handle things like a business and try to keep things to themselves and be careful what they say. And it ends up making them look like complete fools out here. And, and that's the problem. If they had somebody just coming out saying the thing, saying this stuff, they wouldn't come across so dishonest as of lately. They wouldn't come across that way. If somebody could just come out and explain certain things, they wouldn't look the way that they look. Them staying quiet, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. At one point in time, they were speaking what people said. They were speaking too much, and they was giving they were giving people stuff to complain about. But honestly, them saying, "Oh, this is coming soon," and all that stuff like that. Yes, yeah, soon was a trend in the community, and we didn't know what soon really was. But at least they were sharing information. With them not saying anything, I think that it's kind of working against them because things have started going downhill ever since they stopped really speaking out and start looking less genuine. The, their secret sauce, their success was not just the IP. It was their transparency. The fact that they stayed in front of the community, the fact that they were accessible, the fact that we could talk to them and ask them about things when we had concerns. And that does not happen as much. And when it does happen is on platforms that's only going to kiss their ass. Dude, that's the nicest way I can say it. Like, I, I'm not trying to, you know, step on toes or cause drama or anything like that. But the fact of the matter is they tend to surround themselves with ass kissers respectfully. And that, that's just what it is. So we don't really get the answers to questions that we really need most of the time. 
and that that's part of the problem but anyway let's continue when i signed up for vb back in march of 2020 their nfts were minted on the go chain blockchain using the go 721 nft format or at least that's what we were told However, after VV migrated to Immutable X, the founder and chief technology officer of GoChain, Travis Reeder, has been seen on Twitter questioning whether VV NFTs were actually minted on the blockchain or not. It was back in November of 2021 when Travis Reeder was sent an email from a VV user that asked him, are VV collectibles actually minted on GoChain? Because he couldn't find any contract addresses for them. To which Reeder replied, I'm not sure what they're doing. From what I understand, they aren't actually standard NFTs. Back when this email was leaked on Twitter and people began to question it, Travis Reader jumped into the conversation and replied, Where are they? I can't find them. Implying that VB NFTs were never actually minted onto GoChain. So if that's true, that's a big lie that was being told to get people minted onto GoChain. So if that No one can. Exactly. I think that should answer your question. Crazy. That is crazy. But uh, somebody that you so Vivi was using GoChain and he's out here trash talking Vivi. Now, that's weird for somebody to, to be in business with somebody and to be bad talking them like this. And to my knowledge, they were recommended um, by Ben to get to, to use GoChain. I don't know if there's an affiliation between this person and Ben, but if there was kind of like bad blood between Ben and the company, and this guy is friends with Ben in, in some way, shape or form, he may be more incentivized to speak badly about VV, their product and, and things like that. But then again, with as much money as Ben has tied into this project, you would think that he wouldn't want someone out here saying things that's negative. Uh, I mean, so you, it, this, this is just, a shit show to be honest like it's hard to know like it's like who benefits from him out here talking crazy but what professional is out here talking crazy about a client it's it's just all around weird but yeah let me know what you all think in the comment section like that's true that's a big lie that was being told to get people to invest in the vv platform and i don't see why the founder and cto of go chain would lie about something like that some people in the community have implied that Reader could possibly be upset that VV did leave their blockchain and migrate to Immutable X. But if these digital collectibles were in fact minted on the GoChain blockchain as Go721 contracts, then they should be viewable on the GoChain Explorer. But nobody has ever been able to find them on the Explorer, which is why Reader replied, I can't find them. So this begs the question, are VV digital collectibles actually NFTs? There has to be proof of mining to call them NFTs, and I think it's clear that there is no proof from GoChain since the metadata can't be seen. However, VV is on Immutable X now, so they must be NFTs now, right? Well, in a recent graphic posted by Immutable X on Twitter, VV and Omi are not included in what they consider their ecosystem. Instead, other small amateur-looking projects are, such as Simwin Sports, which only has 10,000 followers on Twitter, a dead Discord, and probably very few active users. One of the top marketplaces on Immutable X right now is called Token Trove. And even Token Trove has commented on Discord and Twitter about how VV doesn't actually use the IMX technology. Just recently they tweeted it, we think VV is a cool project, but IMX's general use case is a shared order book that all can use to give decentralized value to your assets. Since VV doesn't share the information outside of their own centralized order book, it doesn't allow for that. This makes me question whether or not VV's assets are ever minted at all. <clears throat> so basically, with VV's centralized approach, it's just always going to be, trust me, bro, they're on the blockchain. Um, and I think that that is that completely goes against what the blockchain was designed for. Um, so they brought, they basically are bringing a centralized, you know, format to a decentralized, to, to a decentralized technology. And yeah, it, it's making it look weird. It's making it look strange. And then we just have to take their word for the fact. And, and the, the issue, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> the issue isn't taking their word. The issue is their word doesn't really mean as much as it used to. There was a point in time where their word actually meant something. 
Now they've spent years going back on their word, not knowing what they're talking about when they give their word. It's been such a long time of them being incompetent. People don't know what to believe. So people want to see proof. People want proof and people want to, people want to know what they can really believe because less and less people are taking Vivi's word. So it's just all, it's, it's all bad, bro. Like it's, it's really all bad when it comes to this project, but I'm hoping that they really step it up, get it together and are able to, I don't know, steer the ship in a better direction. It costs money to mint all those tokens. If not, none of the first appearance characters on Vivi are truly blockchain FAs. In order to fund the Vivi project, Ecomi created the Omi token and presented it with a very bullish set of tokenomics that allowed the supply to be burnt every time a purchase in the VV store or market was made. However, since then the VV team has changed the tokenomics of the OMI token several times to the point where I'm not even sure how it works anymore. Early on in the project though, Ecomi put out a video where they claimed that they accidentally locked away 98 billion OMI tokens for thousands of years due to a typo. Um, there was a, a slight typo in the first round, um, which resulted in a, uh, a lockup of the tokens for many, many thousands of years. Um, but ultimately, the upside of this is that there are now um, uh, almost 115 billion uh, OMI tokens uh, effectively now out of circulation. Some people speculate that due to this, the advisors, team members, and board members are now being paid from the business development wallet, which contained 32.8 billion OMI tokens. However, there are some people in the community who have researched the founders and team members' wallets, and it looks to them like they're still in control of the full 130.7 billion OMI tokens. So that has some people wondering, did they recover the originally locked tokens, or was that all a lie? Some people see those tokens getting locked as a bullish thing for the OMI token, and it might be. But the real question is, was that a typo that was caused by a laziness? Or a lie created by Ecomi to allow them to spend their OMI tokens from the business development wallet instead? If you've seen the recent CoffeeZilla video, you already know about Logan Paul's pre-planned pump and dump scheme with the OMI token. Did you guys ever hear of when he promoted this crypto coin called OMI? OMI, I think is like another one. Bro, bro. Am what I good? Are you, what are you saying? You're, you have the same <laughs> weird little coins that no one's ever heard of yet as me. Yes, you, go. Got, you have Omi? Yeah, bro. Shut the f up. But what people don't know is that it may have all been orchestrated by the Ecomi team. If you go back to when CoffeeZilla began exposing Logan Paul's crypto and NFT scams at the beginning of 2023, you'll see that a man named Chris Zacknoon exposed Ecomi's role in the Omi token pump and dump. In a reply to a CoffeeZilla tweet about Logan Paul, Christopher Zacknoon wrote that in 2020, he worked with a company called Omi. Founder of Pokemon was on the team, that's Alfred Kahn. He says that they contacted Logan to promote, which opened him to the world of crypto. This implies that the Ecomi team was involved in the Logan Paul pump and dump that we all know about. And if you dig into Zacknoon a little bit further, you'll see that it's true that he worked with Ecomi and Al Khan, and still, to this day, his company, which is called Dowmaker, is a partner with Ecomi and Vivi. During the CoffeeZilla video, Logan Paul appears to be talking to Ben Gadinzi. Yo, Ben, we need some more of these, these uh, Akomis. Please, bro, please. E EOD, if possible. Yep. Because we have an episode going tomorrow where we talk very highly of Omi, and I wouldn't be surprised if that caused some traction. Let's go. Omi a f wagon. <laughs> Let's go. And I'm not sure. So that's interesting. It's interesting that there's ties back to the Ecomi team, uh, allegedly there's ties back to the Ecomi team being the ones to onboard Logan Paul into crypto and have him pump the Omi token. It's weird. It's weird, but I mean, it, it actually makes sense. It does make sense. Um, yeah, this is just, this is just a tough situation, man. So much information, so much we don't know. It's just so much. So much we don't know, man. Sure, if Gadenzi was part of the VV and Ecomi team at the time that the pump and dump took place. All right, y'all. So 
Yo, I don't want this video to be too, too long. So I'm going to end this one here. We're going to do a part two covering the rest of the things within this video. But overall, I think that there's a lot of reasons. It looks like there's a lot of reasons to be skeptical, skeptical about Vivi. Skeptical about the Omi token, skeptical about the team. It seems like they, they've hidden a lot throughout their entire time being being here like they've done a lot of good and that's what people judge them on because we naturally want to cling to the greatest aspects of this company but no one wants to talk about the dark side um obviously we don't have any information so we can only take the dark side with a grain of salt except for the things that they constantly get caught doing like uh, over-the-counter deals and things like that but aside from that we don't have anything we don't have any proof we don't have any information and certain things can't be proved and and certain things can't be disproved so it's like we really suck damn near everything just comes down to having to trust them and they have not shown as of recently that they are trustworthy and that's that's where the things is getting tough so yeah let me know what you all think let me know how you all feel we are going to jump into the next part of this a little bit later but yeah that's pretty much it for now be sure to drop that thumbs up subscribe and turn notifications and i will catch you all on the next one Peace out, fam.